What is chiral fermion breaking and why is it useful for propulsion? It's an effect of the strong nuclear force, and the interesting aspect of it is it only occurs at relatively low energies, such as the okay. energy uh, state that our universe is in now. Early on in the universe, it wouldn't work, okay. but we're at low enough temperature that it will now. And it's interesting because it has to do with the strong nuclear force, but the effect that we end up looking at has to do with standard electromagnetics. And it offers an alternate way of creating um, matter-antimatter propulsion system. So this used to be an idea that really hadn't, like there was nothing you could do with it really, right? Uh, the, uh, how like now it's applicable. It is. How to create particle antiparticles through uh, chiral symmetry breaking uh, as, as through the electromagnetic effect that it allows was something proposed um, a couple decades ago by uh, uh, John Presco at Caltech, but it, okay. it was, he taught it in a field theory course without application. And now you're taking it and applying it. Yes, I'm seeing how it actually could be applied to create an alternative uh, matter-antimatter uh, uh, propulsion system that creates the uh, antimatter-matter pairs in situ. And how's that coming along? Uh, it's, it's all at the, at the theoretical level. Okay. Do you think that they'll, is it five or ten years out from being something that might actually be useful? It could. It really doesn't involve uh, technology that uh, we don't have today. Okay, so it's all, as long as we can just figure out how to apply it appropriately. I think so. Okay. Um, and what role might particle physics play in interstellar propulsion? Um, as I said, it, it uh, allows an alternative way of creating uh, true quark antiquark pairs, real particles from the virtual sea that they exist in by uh, using um, a, a parallel electric and magnetic field to push them into existence. Awesome. All right, thanks.